Watch this. Here in America, we've done a better job at being good slaves than we have ever been at being good and obedient children unto our Father God. Understand that. There's no way around it. We have been better as slaves than we have been at serving God. charge of the Lord, that means you're going to stay in order with what God already ordained us to be. When we went into slavery, we lost that charge. We were discontinued from our heritage. We lost our sense of being, our sense of value to the Lord because we started chasing after the ways of the other nations. Once we break God's laws, a spirit comes upon us. So now as a generation of men, the 7 and 31? 32? Yes, sir. 32? Now a spirit has come upon us in this generation. Read that. Luke chapter 7 verse 32. Uh -huh. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Go on to verse 31. Verse 31. And the Lord said, uh -huh. where un unto them shall I liken the men of this generation? So now after year upon year upon generation upon decade upon millennium of this slavery that has taken over our people, Christ was asked, well, what should I like in the men of this generation and to follow? Read. And to what are they like? Uh -huh. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. So not only have we taken off our badge of manly dignity to set us apart as men of the Most High God, but now we act like children sitting in the marketplace. You ever uh, took your son in the store and said, when you go in this store, what you tell him? Don't ask for nothing. Don't touch nothing. But guess what? Now, as a people, we're touching the unclean things. We're asking for the ways of the other nations. And we're actually involving ourselves in it and actually breaking God's laws every action. You understand that? One of the main things is the, our ideologies. Whether it be Christianity, Nuhabianism, Egyptology, all of these things have taken us away from keeping God's commandments. So that's why as a people, we don't have a charge. We don't have any energy. We don't have any mindset that's gonna set us in order. For instance, what uh, ideology do you uh, subscribe to? What, what What is your religion per se? Seven day. Seven day Adventist, okay. So in the seven day Adventist, what are some of the ordinances that you guys act upon and apply? What are some of the ordinances? Yes. Because what are the things that you are doing, doing in the Seventh Day Adventist Church to say that you are? You, I think you use the word an allegiance yeah. to God. Right. Go ahead. Um, so, what things are there? Just basic preparation for the Sabbath, um, keeping the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath, and all of His commandments that He entailed. Okay. So, one of the uh, 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 so is the Sabbath the only time? Matter of fact, let's get Leviticus twenty-three. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you some days that are considered Sabbaths. Because is it just the seventh day that's considered a Sabbath? Yes. Only the seventh day is considered a Sabbath. You, be, you have the ceremonial practice that were done on other days in which they spoke of Sabbath, but the Sabbath day is the day that was given to right. the entire world. Okay. It was given to his people. It was, there. Oh, it, was, it was done, it was, it was in place or during creation. Okay, so let, I, 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 I'm going to deal with you on this world thing. Because we got we to gotta zero in on who God is really talking to. Let's get world. Let's get world. Isaiah 45, 17. We, yeah, that goes back to that John 3, 16 thing. Who is the world that God is talking to? Isaiah 45, 17. 
I'll give say it to the world. Chapter 45, verse 17. Go ahead. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. So with, Israel will be saved in the Lord. Read. With an everlasting salvation. Uh -huh. And ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded. World without end. So what is Israel called in that scripture? What is Israel called? Read that last part again. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded. World without end. Israel is that world. Yeah. Get Psalm 147, 19. Let's, let's, let's make sure that we understand that when God gave his commandments, he was only giving it to one nation and one nation only. Right. This is what the Bible says. Read. Yeah. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. Uh -huh. He showed his word unto Jacob. Unto Jacob. Jacob's name was later changed into Israel, right? Right. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh -huh. He have not dealt so with any nation. Uh oh. So how can we say that the world means everybody, but God says He has not dealt so with any other people? Uh, later spoke of in Revelations. I can't recall the chapter about those that. You're probably talking about chapter seven. Those that follow and those that practice with His people. So watch this. Watch this. I'm 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 I'm, I'm a cut it yeah. real short. On today, this weekend, the majority of the world is celebrating what? Yeah. yeah. Celebrate what? Halloween. Halloween. Mm -hmm. Do Christian churches celebrate Halloween? They're not supposed to. They're not supposed to. So pause. I want you to hear this discourse. Yep. Yeah. They're not supposed to. Not supposed so to. if they're not supposed to, but they are, are they following God? Nope. Are they following Christ? Nope. So guess what? Everybody can't be a part of that number. But guess what? Who is that number? The children of Israel. That's right. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who were made slaves and given these ideologies to follow. These are the people that we're out here seeking to save. That's who God is sending his messengers out to. You understand that? Yep. So read that again. He have not dealt so with any nation. God did not deal with any people to punish them for breaking his laws other than the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So those laws only apply to those people. That makes sense. Because we don't want to say world, meaning everybody. No, everybody didn't go through this type of punishment. You understand? Right. All right. Look, who is William? Who is William Miller? I don't know who William Miller is. 1860. Uh oh, 1863, and wouldn't that be the founder of Seven Day Adventists? William Miller, uh -huh. founder of Seven Day Adventists. W wouldn't that be? be because yes, you would, you would, you should want to know yeah. who that progenitor or who the founding father of your faith is, right? Right. right? So, what does your founding father of your faith look like? Huh? Why? The same people that came and oppressed you in slavery, teaching you their ways. You understand that? But the founding father of our faith is Jesus Christ, the yes, black Lord. man, the black Messiah. Lord. And he didn't, he's not going to condone it. He's not, if we don't repent of our sins and doing these wicked holidays, he's not going to forgive it. We have that chance to repent now by coming back to keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's and those laws were only given to the children of Israel. You understand that? Yeah. So let's go back. Go back. Now, you also said something else. Show yeah, show them, show them, show them. Because the, a lot of our people have been scattered to the ideologies of these different religions when those same people who founded those religions look just like the people who put us in slavery. Right. They taught us the ways that made us more docile. That's us being in that marketplace as children, not knowing who we are, what God requires of us. You understand that? You think everybody is love, everything that God has? No, let's find out what love is. Matter of fact, let's hit that. Let's hit that real quick. And then we're going to come back to uh, something else that you said. How do we actually love God? All right, read. First John chapter 5, verse 3. But this is the love of God, read. that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So, a commandment is not balding our head. Our, a commandment is keeping the Sabbath day, learning what days are considered Sabbaths, like the new moon. What about the feast of Passover? Have y'all ever kept that? Feast of Passover? Yeah. It, these are Sabbaths of the Lord. There are going to be two Sabbaths that come with the Feast of Passover. Right. You understand that? So have you really been 
uh, uh, an Adventist of what God said? No. You've been doing what your oppressor told you to do. That's no, right. so I'm studying the Bible a little, you know, we're right. me and my son, we're, we're, we're studying so the Bible as possible. We've done See it. some of y'all information online. Right. And, and others, you know, we're taking that information and, and comparing those studies. Get Isaiah 5 and 20. But watch this. This is where that mindset comes in to us being disobedient children. Read. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Uh -huh. Woe unto them that call evil, evil good. So as a people, we have started to call evil good. Prostitution, drugs, whoremongering, a, a life of iniquity. We call that good. We actually have a, a, a saying, YOLO, you only live once. Right. You understand that? But God says, if you live in your iniquity, you will die twice. Understand that. So are we going to be a slave that dies twice to oppression and then damnation? Or are we going to repent and come out of our sins? Read on. And good evil. And good evil. So we got these uh, uh, various things in the Bible, various laws, and our people think those laws are grievous. You want to know why? Because there's a spirit in man that makes them despise the laws of God. And that's what we're coming to teach our people and bring them out of. And, or either expose that rebellious spirit in them so that they know where they stand with God. But read the next part. That put darkness for light uh -huh. and light for darkness. So now the good of God's laws, we are trying to find evil in the world. That's how, that's how uh, in Deuteronomy 28 it says we're groping at noonday like the blind groping darkness. Meaning you don't see, you don't have a way out. But you, the, the answers are right here in front of you. But we reject it. We say, there's light over there. Let me go back to the dark corner. Let me go back to my sin. So the question is, are you going to rest in your sin? No. So watch this. You see the fringes? I think that was brought out to you earlier. Are you going to apply this law and command it to your life? And, and that's and I'm glad you brothers did come in. Did y'all have any other questions that y'all really sincerely wanted to ask concerning no. your faith? No, we came to, to meet you guys, man. I, I used some of your information during studying myself. Okay. Like so I watch said, this. we're studying and we're, we're getting close ourselves. Studying? We're All right. Yep. So watch this. Uh, um, I want to get Hebrews 10 and 25. Because Sabbaths, all of them, are days where we gather. Right? And what, hap what happens in our communities is we learn to gather with people who despise God. What about communicating and sitting down and fellowshipping with those who you are knowing keep the commandments of God? Read. Go ahead and get that. Hebrews 10, 25. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Uh -huh. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. So we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves, whether it be the Sabbath, whether it be for regular fellowship, because it didn't say when, right, right. but coming together with your like-minded brothers who keep the commandments, who are going to hold you accountable to keeping the commandments, forsake not that assembly. You understand? We don't. As the manner of some is, uh -huh. but exhorting one another. And and exhorting. Exhortation. You know, what does exhortation mean? Is exhortation like a good word that has a good connotation, negative connotation? What, what does exhortation go into? Okay, what you think? Exhortation. Bad. Bad? No, it's not bad. It's actually good because I can exhort you to continue, like, like it says in the scriptures, exhort you to continue in the faith. Encouragement. But also, exhortation goes into correction. So right now, when we were telling you about the baldness, the bald head, we're correcting you in exhortation. That's going to be a part of you built. I'll say that again. No, no, no. Watch this. Now, watch this. Exhortation. Right. Because he, he, he missing a few strands of hair too. You know what I'm saying? But watch watch where the encouragement of the Lord is. Right. See, all the, all the four hair ball brothers coming out of, out of the woodwork. But watch this. Now, watch this. Did you know that the Bible actually talked about being four hair ball? Didn't know that. So this is exhortation. Get that in Leviticus. Because if you make baldness upon your head, you're defiling the laws of God. You're defiling yourself. There's a difference between you breaking God's laws and making baldness using a razor yourself, making the baldness, and you having the uh, hair falling off your head. You got it? Yes, sir. Leviticus chapter 13, 
verse 40. Uh -huh. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. So, like most of y'all wrote one, two, and three, y'all got your hair falling off. But once that hair starts falling off, don't make the decision to make baldness to the rest of your head. You understand that? That's the work of the Lord that's going on. Right? Read on. He is bald, yet is he clean. Yet is he clean. So when that hair starts falling off, you ain't defiled. Ain't nothing wrong with your spirit or nothing like that. God says, even though it's falling off, you're still clean. But where you get unclean is making the decision to take a razor and shave the rest of it off to follow behind it. Because you think you're covering shame. No, you're not. You're not covering, you're adding more shame to yourself. You know what? That's part of that slavery you was talking about because I feel like I'm covering shame every time I got well, shaved. Right. That's because why I let you, it grow out. No. You, you actually I can't be lie. This is more me, wisdom. You actually be showing more wisdom by allowing that to sit there. But How old are you? How old are you, Bob? Man, I'll be 42 next month. They all praises. That's, <laughs> that's what. If we are, and, and we got to start thinking about gratitude unto the Lord. First off, get that in Joel 2 and 27. If we were really gracious to what the Lord has preserved us to, to even be here right now, if we were really in that spirit of grace and gratitude to the Lord, we would follow his commandments and say, you know what? I could have been in this situation. Watch this. Go ahead. Read that. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Uh -huh. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So God chose us to be his special people. He chose to be in the midst of us. Even while we're thinking that God is the so-called white man. While we think that God is in the so-called East Indian man, the Arab man, Chinese man. While we're thinking that, God says, I chose you to be in the midst of you. I chose to give my power to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Even while we're destitute in our mind. Read on. And that I am the Lord, your God. Your God. Read. And none else. And none else. God doesn't belong to anybody else but those who broke his law, statutes, and commandments. And if we had that spirit of gratitude, we would want to keep his commandments with that grace. You understand that? But what is grace? That we, we use a lot of words, but have we ever relied on the Bible to explain that to us? We will be dealing in grace. We will be thankful that he gave us an opportunity to learn his word correctly. Because guess what? If you would die, if you die in your iniquity, what happens? You die in the sin. Right. You die in the sin. You burn in hell. Like. Right. But watch this. We're already in hell. The conditions we're in are a, a reflection of the decisions we've made as a people generation after generation after generation. Us being in the bottoms of society, drinking the dregs of society, being killed, shot down in the street, it's a reflection of what we have done generation after generation after generation to ourselves. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. God is in the midst of Israel and Israel by itself. So grace has appeared to the children of Israel who disobeyed God in time past. But what is that grace? Read. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and denying ungodliness. So how do we recognize things that are ungodly? You have to go to the Bible to find out what God allows when thou shalt or what God disallows thou shalt not. You understand that? So just by those simple words, you're able to understand what is godly and ungodly. But grace gives us the opportunity to deny the ungodliness. 
what, whether it's great or well, all of it's the same, whether it be something you consider great like adultery, stealing, right? Bearing false witness or something we consider as small as shaving our head, defiling the Sabbath day. Because watch this, on, on the Sabbath, as seven day Adventists, do y'all cook on the Sabbath? No. No? Or uh, do y'all buy and sell? Yeah, cause I think I went to school with a seven day Adventist, as a matter of fact. All right? So, also, do, well, y'all do congregate on that day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, y'all doing certain things, but do you know your nationality? I don't know all of it. Right. Like I say, I'm studying, we're studying ourselves, but we're trying to go by what's exactly in the Bible. And that, right. That's what seven day they, they, they profess to do, too. They profess what? profess to do too, to go by what's exactly in the Bible. Okay. Alright, so they, they, and that's why in that ideology, did they ever teach you your nationality? They probably did, like I said, uh, uh, straight away and, and, and uh, made a lot of mistakes along the way. So okay. I'm trying to get it correct now. So I'm trying to make sure I have my son and, and, and other family members with me. We'll be trying to do it the right way. Okay. So, the right way. Uh, what is that? John 14. I am the way, the truth. John 14. Let's get that. John 14. I think it's verse 6. Verse 6. You got it? Yes, sir. John chapter 14, verse 6. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh -huh. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, what does that mean? You, 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 it seems like you're familiar with that scripture. What does that mean? And I want John 14, 15. Go ahead. What does that say, mean? Say it again. Say it again. So that, that scripture where Christ was saying, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man can get to the Father but by me. What does that mean? It means by believing, having faith in him. For he came and fulfilled all that the Father has seen and, and, and given us to do. Okay. So by us believing in him, having faith in him, and following the commandments, we'll get to the Father. Okay. Get, uh, Revelation 1 and 14. And I'm going to show you just how your image should be in the image of Christ. Real quick. Real quick. Revelation 1.14. This is why. Because if we're going to be in the image of Christ, walking like Christ walked, then we got to make a conscious decision to look in his image. Following the same laws he followed. Wearing the same things he wore. That's a real follower. You want to be in that same spit image. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. 14 yes. His head and his hair. So right, we're going to stop right there. You're bald in your head, but Christ had hairs on his head and hairs on his face. You should want to be in that image. When your son looks at you, he should be able to see a spitting image of Christ in his household. You understand that? And even when it comes to that beard, you don't want to mar the corners. You want to let, you know how you uh, cutting into that neck? Yeah. Right. You don't want to do that. That's what we learned here in our captivity. You know, the fashions of the Greeks. You know, his head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. As white as snow. So his hairs on his head and his face were white in color and woolly in texture, just like your hair up there. Right? We know. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. Feet like unto fine brass. So guess what? Christ didn't look like William Miller. Like, like like they put in our churches. Do, did they have these images in your church? No. But, now, but did they look like this image? Dude, you have the. Uh, you said they don't have these images in your church. Not not in your church, right? Do they have them in those Bibles? Ah, oh, so guess what? At the end of the day, they have them in your church. <laughs> Why? Because that is a part of their propaganda to teach you a diff a false Christ. You understand? So when a false Christ comes a false identity, a false ideology, false teaching, and false belief. Because guess what? Regardless, we have children that walk up to these signs and call Christ that is described in the Bible, the devil. So when they call Christ looking like this, the devil, what do they call you, even though you're a deacon in the church? You see, you see that's where, not a deacon yet, but that's what I'm saying. We have to we as people, we have to get to our young ones. Because a lot of stuff, believe it or not, the world is waking up. The world is, is truly waking up. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of this stuff here, to man. That, huh? Oh, I'm talking about the disinformation of Christ being black? The information of Christ being black. A oh. lot of our church hadn't been given that. I'm, I'm they you know of it, 
I'm sure but they have been people. teaching it. So what saying? does the Bible say awake to? Say that again? What does the Bible say awaken to? Awaken to the truth. Okay. Or what what else? Be led by false doctrine. That's 1 no. Corinthians 15, and I want to say 34. 15, 34. And I'm going to ask a follow-up question. So this is how we study to get that understanding yeah. to know what it is we're doing, okay? So here we go. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Uh -huh. Awake to righteousness. So a lot of our people right. call themselves woke in all these crazy ideologies. You, uh, uh, such as, uh, what's the new one out? New, uh, well, new Albinism, Egyptology, you got this African spirituality, uh, Oshun, and all this foolishness. They, they say they woke. You ever heard that? They say, I'm woke. But God says, awake to righteousness. What is righteousness? His way. His way. What is his way? The commandment. Simply put, you don't even have to go to Deuteronomy 625 because the brother just answered but righteousness, according to the Bible, is keeping the commandments. So are those people who say they won't? And, and granted, knowing what the image of Christ is, is good. But if we don't... Speaking, speaking, let me, let me finish that. Wait, wait. If we don't understand the importance of what Christ looked like, then that knowledge means us no good. Because guess what? We can know that Christ is black all we want to, but if we hate our brother, how can we really say we love Christ? If we love Christ, we will want to fashion ourselves in that image. That's why you see your brothers, uh, most people say, well, y'all got on these gowns and outfits. No, we're dressing in the, in the way of our forefathers. This is warlike apparel. You understand it? We're, we're trying to take on the spirit of our forefathers that they had in time past, and we're trying to bring it to time now. We're doing the same work. Yep. We're showing that importance to our people to come back to our nationality. You understand? Read. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. Read. And sin not. And sin not. Because the ways that we have learned have all been sin here in America. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.